In this lecture, we will discuss about the index formula computation for the two-dimensional array. And uh, we are assuming that the elements are stored here as row major order fashion. So row major order fashion means uh, we will first store the elements of the first uh, of the first row, then we will store the elements of the second row, and then we will store the elements of the third row, and so on and so forth. So for example, let's say we have a 2D array. 2D array is actually assumed as uh, form of the matrix in which there are some rows and some columns. Now suppose this is a 2D array. In this 2D array there will be two dimensions, one for the row side and another one for the column side. Uh, now uh, for the 2D array, if uh, there are two dimensions, for the row side let's say the dimensions are L1 and U1. L1 and U1 means this, this is the lower bound and this is the upper bound as we took in the one dimensional array. And uh, lower bound is just suggesting us what is the first index and the upper bound is suggesting us what is the last index. Similarly for the column side let's say we have another set of the lower and the upper bounds let's say L2 and U2. And uh, let's say we have an array and since this is we are, con we are considering that this is the algorithmic array and uh, this is the general kind of the array and the dimension are separated by comma let's say we usually take uh, or represent the dimensions in c as two square brackets or pair of square brackets this is not taken like that it is this only array containing the first dimension comma second dimension now we are interested in finding out the index formula so uh, Let's say this is L1 index, this is L1 plus 1 index and so on and so forth. This is U1 index. This will be U1 minus 1 index for the row side. For the column side it will be L2, L2 plus 1, L2 plus 3 and so on and so forth. Last index will be U2. Second last index will be U2 minus 1. So for uh, simplicity uh, we will assume that uh, the first index is 1, last index is u1 only, let's say the, for the second dimension also the first index is 1 and the last index is u2. This is the assumption and we will resume, remove this, this assumption later and we will also assume that uh, there is uh, 1 byte storage per element. So what happens in the memory that if you are going to store the elements in the row major order fashion First you will store this element, then this one, then this one, this one, this one, this one. After this one, you will store this element. Fine. Or you can say that the element, ad address of this element and address of this element. This is one distance away. It means immediately after this, uh, this element, this element will be stored. Similarly, in a sequential fashion, we, just, uh, we will be have the addresses the address of this element and address of this element. This is just one distance away. It means this element will have an address one more than this one. Fine. So it is actually like a 1D array only. It means the, in the memory it will look like the 1D array. The elements address will be uh, in the contiguous, uh, elements will be stored in the contiguous memory. Fine. So let's uh, make this array once again and let's say these are the rows these are representing the rows these are representing the columns and let's say the first index is 1 second index is 2 3 and so on and so forth somewhere there is ith row and total number of rows are u1 let's say first column second column and let's say somewhere in between I have the jth column and the last column is u2 if I know that the address of the first element is alpha this is the address of first element that is a11 row column so we will treat it like the uh, with the pair row and column address of a11 is alpha so what will be the address of a12 it will be alpha plus 1 because we have assumed that 
the index uh, every element is requiring one byte for the storage similarly a13 will be alpha plus 2 and then what will be the address of a1 u2 this will be alpha plus u2 minus 1 why is it so if it is 3 it is 2 it is 2 it is 1 if it is u2 it will be u2 minus 1 what will be the address of this element a21 a21 will be alpha plus u2 minus 1 plus 1 so these two will be cancelled out so we will remain with alpha plus u2 so what uh, can we assume it like this? if we are going at this first element of the second row or we are finding out the address of the second first element of the second row then we stored all the elements of the first one then we have come to this so that's why it is alpha plus u2 there will be u2 element in the first row similarly if you are finding out the address of the first element of third row then it will be alpha plus u2 plus u2 there are u2 elements in the first row similarly u2 elements in the second row so we can write it like alpha plus 2 into u2 similarly if i am trying to find out the address of first element in the ith row this should be equal to alpha plus i minus 1 into u2 why i minus 1 you see if it is 2 it is 1 multiplied with u2 if it is 3 it is 2 multiplied with u2 so if it is i it will be i minus 1 multiplied with u2 fine so we are here what will the address of this element this element is actually second element of i row this will be one more than the address of this element so alpha plus i minus 1 into u2 plus 1 what will be the address of this element this is a i 3 element alpha plus i minus 1 into u3 sorry u2 plus 2 so if it is 2 it is plus 1 if it is 3 it is plus 2 similarly we can assume that a i j we are going in some j row here this will be equals to alpha plus i minus 1 into u2 plus j minus 1 fine alpha plus i minus 1 into u2 plus j minus 1 so this is the preliminary formula that we have found we will remove the assumptions now uh, the first assumption here was that every element is taking one byte for the storage if i remove that assumption then our ad, our formula will be alpha plus i minus 1 into u2 plus j minus 1 this quantity root 2 multiply with n fine now we are now assuming that uh, i and j is uh, sorry the first index are not one first index means the first row index and the first column index is not one it is l1 and l2 respectively then uh, this i will actually be replaced by i minus l1 plus 1 because i is towards the row side and since j is towards the column side it will also be replaced with uh, j minus l2 plus 1 and for u2 u2 is actually representing how many elements are there in the first column so if the index is starting from 1 obviously it will be u2 element let's say if the index is starting from minus 1 let's say minus 1 to 7 then the total number of elements in the first column will be 7 minus minus 1 plus 1 it means 9 elements fine you can just think like this minus 1 then 0 then 1 then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 7. So you count the number of elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So u2 will also be replaced like that only. So alpha plus i minus l1 plus 1 and minus 1 was there already. u2 will be replaced by u2 minus l2 plus 1. j represents the column side. So j minus l2 plus 1 and minus 1 is there already whole multiplied with n equals to alpha plus i minus l1 u2 minus l2 plus 1 why is it so because these two cancelled out similarly these two will also be cancelled out multiplied with n so now this is the 
formula for address of ij element in the 2d array wherein the indexes are starting from l1 and l2 on the row and the column side respectively and every store every element is requiring n byte for storage thank you